Welcome here. Ooh, we are excited. I've been wanting to do a pantry restock for a little while now. I've done a few of these videos and I really like them because they are typically what I do uh, pretty much every single week. I will either test out recipes, I will try to make things on my own versus buying it from the store. I will challenge myself, I'll see what works and I figured today I would do a restock of granola bars. So I have previously bought in granola bars from the store, honestly, years ago. It's been a long time since I've bought in granola bars because I just don't like what's in them, but I also haven't gotten to that point of making them myself. And now I am. I've been doing granola bars and cereal bars recently, and it has been awesome. These are kind of chewy-esque granola bars. I do a third a cup of salted butter, half a cup of brown sugar, and then a quarter cup of honey. I didn't have honey here, so I use maple syrup. They're not as sticky as usual, but use what you have. I'm adding in a little bit of vanilla, also taking some of it onto my neck because it makes me smell amazing for a couple days. And I'm going to bring this to a medium heat on my stove. I like it to be bubbly, to start to thicken, and then I'm gonna add in my quick oats. I'm gonna do one and a half cups of quick oats, and then I'm gonna add in one and a half cups of crispy rice cereal. I just have some chocolate koala crisp. I'm adding in a little bit of cinnamon as well as three tablespoons of ground flax. This is kind of the consistency we're going for. Again, if you use honey, these bars will be so much stickier, but again, I had to use what I had. So I used maple syrup. You are gonna need any sort of mold. I'm just gonna use my bread loaf pans because I like how very square or rectangular that they are with the sharp edges. It's nice to cut these into good granola bars. So I'm going to spoon my mixture into my bread loaf pans. I like to line them with parchment paper because they're easier to press and also easier to take out. I've also just stored them in here until I feel like cutting them up. So that's handy as well. I'm gonna take a buttered spoon, it's kind of greasy. I'm going to press down my mixture and then I'm gonna add my toppings, which has recently just been dark chocolate chips. I do like using the mini ones, but I didn't have any, so use what you have. I'm gonna use just the regular size dark chocolate chips. I'm gonna press it into my granola bar tops put them into the fridge for a couple hours. I need them to harden here, and I'm gonna get started on my buns. So I'm pretty sure I've shared this recipe. It is just a discard sourdough bun recipe. I will find that video and I will link it down below. I like that I can make these same day, but also give them a lot of time to sit and ferment. Um, at least a little bit because it's so good for your gut. I'm just going to shape my dough here, let it sit for a little bit and grab my cookie sheet or my baking pan. I'm gonna take a ton of butter, go over my entire pan and then start chopping up my bread. So usually this would make 12 buns, but I think I ended up making more like 16. I have five kids and they are eight and under. So my smaller kids actually appreciate a smaller sandwich instead of something quite large. Uh, so they're kind of going a longer way uh, having them a little bit smaller. Thank you to Element for sponsoring this portion of today's video. There's not a day that goes by that my husband and I are not enjoying Element. Not only is it a delicious electrolyte drink, but it contains everything you need and nothing that you don't. For example, it contains a science-backed electrolyte ratio, which is 1,000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, and 60 milligrams of magnesium. And on top of that, it contains no sugar, gluten, artificial ingredients, and fillers. It's just all the good stuff. This is what 
what you want right here. You might be asking yourself, why so much sodium? And the reason for that is when you sweat, maybe you're like me, you're a mama, you're busy, you're moving around all the time. When you sweat, the main electrolyte that you are losing is sodium and it needs to be replaced. An element is gonna help your body do that. There's numerous functions in the body where electrolytes are just extremely important for those to work well. We're talking nutrient absorption, hormonal regulation, and even just hydration. Element can help you and your electrolyte deficiency. Maybe you're experiencing things like headaches, fatigue, sleepiness, muscle cramps, Element can help you prevent that. So whether you're an Olympic athlete, a Navy SEAL, or a stay-at-home mom, Element is here to help you. I love their citrus salt. It is such a good flavor, but I also love orange salt, a dear place in my heart, as well as my husband's. These are amazing to drink cold, but if you're into something maybe a little bit warmer for this cooler time of year, they have a limited edition chocolate medley that you are to take warm and is so nice to have for those cold mornings or to get you going for bed at night. Right now, Element is offering my viewers a free sample pack with any order. That's eight single serving packs that are free. It's a great way to share the salt love or just keep it for yourself and try some more flavors. Get yours at drinkelement.com forward slash Sarah That's drinklmnt.com forward slash Sarah I have been working oh so hard to have a good, go to sourdough cracker recipe. I don't like what most cracker brands have for ingredients at the store and I like making things at home. So I have finally found a recipe that works really well for me. It is 170 grams of sourdough discard, two third cup of melted salted butter. You're gonna mix that together and then sprinkle on top one and a half cups of flour, half a teaspoon of salt, and then any dry herbs to go into it if you like. We really like the pepper, thyme, dill, basil, oregano route. I'm gonna sprinkle a bunch of that in. I'm going to kind of knead it in with my spindle, but then put it on the counter, start using my hands. This is a greasy kind of butter ball, so it's not gonna to stick to your hands. You're gonna knead it really well, let it rest for about 20 minutes, knead it one more time, let it rest again 20 more minutes, and then you're ready to roll this out. I am putting it in between parchment paper because I don't want to flour it, but it's also just a little bit slick and sticky if you're going to use a rolling pin. So I take my parchment paper, roll it in between. I will do this twice. If I want thin crackers, I will divide the dough and make the dough much thinner if I want um, thin crackers. But today we're doing puffy crackers, which is fun and they're really filling. I'm being super basic with these and I'm just using my knife to cut them into like squares and diamonds. But what's really fun is you can get your kids involved and grab some like heart-shaped little cookie cutters or goldfish cracker cutters. Uh, you can get those off of like Amazon or like even at your local store and you can make really cute crackers. But here we're keeping it simple. I'm gonna poke some holes on top with a fork just a few on each cracker and then I'm gonna bake these at 375 about 15 more like 20 minutes you're gonna watch these really puff up and we serve them plain I really like them with my homemade roasted red pepper peanut butter hummus oh man that is so good I can link that recipe down below as well it was in a little bit of a recent video and it's been such a go-to hummus for me. These are just very fun. Again, that kind of layered biscuit um, flavor and texture is so inviting and easy to eat. buns are coming out of the oven. I'm going to place a damp towel on top to help kind of soften the tops of the buns. And then I'm going to get started with some sourdough breadcrumbs, which I use for coating things like chicken, chicken tenders, chicken wings. And then I'm also going to show you guys how I do sourdough croutons. This is all extremely easy. I use my soft sourdough sandwich loaf to do this. And again, I will link that down below. For the breadcrumbs, I'm going to heavily toast my bread in the toaster. I want it to be quite golden brown. 
for my croutons, I'm taking about four slices of thickly sliced bread and I'm just going to create some cubes. All of these are gonna go into my bowl. I'm gonna coat it with a bunch of olive oil, shake it up really good because you want all your croutons to be covered in the oil so uh, the toppings can stick to it. I'm gonna season it with some sea salt, pepper, thyme, a little bit of parmesan, oregano, and again, I'm gonna shake it. I'm gonna put this onto my baking sheet and I will bake these at 350 for about 10 to 15 minutes. If you like them super crispy, just keep an eye on them, let them get golden brown. While those are baking, I'm gonna grab my toast from the toaster. I think I ended up using about six slices of toast here. I'm gonna take them, let them cool a little bit, slice them up into chunks, put them into my blender and get slowed down by Edmund because every single time I open the fridge, this boy has to close it. Energy saving is extremely important to this boy. While I'm waiting for my toast to cool down a little bit further, I thought I would take out my granola bars and chop them up. Again, they're not as uh, sticky as I want them to be, but they're still so good. I can't get enough of these and they're just filled with um, good stuff. No preservatives, they're also gluten-free. You can make them vegan if you wanna use a vegan butter, and I really enjoy them. Okay, and we continue on. And also, as you can see, when I'm doing a pantry restock kind of day, I'm not sticking to one thing from start to finish. I am going through my day puzzle piecing all of this stuff together to make the best use of my time. So buns are on the cooling rack, croutons out of the oven. Let's tackle these breadcrumbs. So I'm just gonna put them into my blender. If you have a food processor, that works great too. And I'm gonna start pulsing them on high. So I have quite a few pieces of bread in here. And because of that, my blender is just struggling to get all of them. So I'm gonna grab my cookie sheet. I'm gonna put all the breadcrumbs onto it and then pick out the chunky pieces of toast that still need to be blended out from the crumb mixture and then I'm gonna go at it again and you can see it starts pulsing really well, blending really well, and our breadcrumbs are looking great. I like the breadcrumbs to be quite fine. That's just what I prefer when it comes to um, coating chicken. I prefer a very fine breadcrumb, but you can make it as fine or as chunky as you like. I'm gonna bake these at 350 for about 10 minutes. I want to remove as much moisture as possible so they store longer and um, have a better texture. I have been out of icing sugar for too long and have been wanting to make some uh, sugar cookies and cakes. So I'm making some icing sugar. I just take my organic cane sugar, pour as much as I want into my blender and I blend it on high until it's a very fine powder. That is how you make icing sugar. I also realized that a lot of icing sugar from the store has been bleached or whitened to encourage that white um, look <laughs> to uh, when you make a buttercream or a frosting. So I prefer making it at home. It's also way cheaper and is so easy to just put as much sugar as you want into your blender and then you're set. I do put this into a container and keep my container open for a couple hours to remove any moisture or heat that has come from blending. I really, really, really like ginger. Ginger to me is um, amazing for my gut. I really like the taste of it. I like that spice. I enjoy how it smells. I enjoy what it does for my skin. And I really like a good ginger tea, but fresh. So I do like making ginger juice every little bit, freezing the juice into small, uh, molds. I have some heart molds here and then using them in tea or I'll throw it into a soup, maybe a stew or a gravy. These are small servings, so it's not super harsh, 
but if you're not used to ginger, maybe it would be really harsh, but it's so good for your health. I'm going to juice the ginger, pour it into molds, let it freeze overnight, and then also work on storing some of these things. So I'm going to let my breadcrumbs sit for a couple hours again. I just wanna take all the moisture out Breadcrumbs can easily mold if it still has moisture present at room temperature. So I'm going to let those sit for a few hours. As for the croutons, I'm putting them into a container. I put them into the fridge and when I'm ready to use them, they're good to go. If I need them to be a little more toasted, I can always throw them into the broiler and let them toast further. This is the next day. This is actually, I think this will be my next video that you guys see, but I'm removing my ginger juice hearts from the molds, putting it into a Ziploc container and I'll be able to use those whenever I need to. And I also thought while well, I'm at it, I'm gonna make myself some ginger tea. <laughs> Thank you very much for being here and joining me as I restock some uh, goods in my kitchen. If you wanna see more of these videos, I have that playlist linked down below for you in the description box.